Hi, I'm Deacon John Wilson, the Education Enrichment Director for West Angeles Church, here to talk to you about a most, most important topic if you're in college or preparing to go to college, and that is how you can pay for college. It's a very, very important topic uh, that is very relevant today, especially with the cost of college. Now, we had an earlier video we talked about stop out, but this is a little bit different because this is assuming you're not going to be stopping out for school. You're going to stay in school. Your parents can keep you in school. There are ways you can assist them in you actually paying for college. The first way you can help pay for college, well, I'll tell you the three ways first. The first way is that you can get better grades. The second way is I want you to be looking for dollars, those scholarships, and we'll talk about that. And then I think you should be planning to finish college in three to four years. This is a way that can save you lots of money and lots of time too as well. First of all, under how you can get better grades, I need you to think about some key areas in your life at college. And if you're in high school, while you're in high school, what better time to think about these things than in high school? How you can get better grades, because if you get better grades in high school, it's going to be cheaper for you to go to college. You're going to get scholarships from the college. You're going to get scholarships from the outside. Here's some things to consider. Take a look at the kind of friends you're around, who you're hanging around. Are they the kind of people that you're going to be able to get good grades if you're around them a lot? Maybe you need to control your time with certain people. Maybe you need to consider study assistance programs, such as tutoring and things like that that will help you. We have a program here at West Andros, as a matter of fact, that can really help. You need to think also about your priorities and whether you're setting the right priorities for yourself and spending your time wisely. All of those things go toward getting good grades. And let me not forget getting along with your teachers, learning how to communicate with your teachers. Those are all things that we do in the context of our program, particularly in the summers, in our summer enrichment program and in conferences we can have with you. So your first thing you want to do is you want to get good grades. Getting good grades can, say, can earn you a lot of good money from colleges if you're not in college yet. If you're in college already, there's internships and programs on the campus that are heavily dependent on your grades for you to get those monies into your hands. If everything is going to be based on grades while you're in college and changing your situation with your financial aid or with the amount of money your parents are spending for college. Well, the second way we can look for money from, uh, for our parents and to help our parents out uh, is to search for scholarships. Now it's very, very important that we destroy some of the myths about scholarships. As I just alluded to a moment ago, it's a lot about your grades and your performance in high school, but also you need to know where to look for scholarships. Um, you should spend a couple of hours a week using Google for sure, but I would also think of obvious things like products that you use, businesses that you go to, your parents' job and union affiliations, utilities, church sororities and fraternities, denominational awards. We have an award here at West Angeles, for example, for our members called the West Angeles Sponsorship Award. If you're interested in that, you can always call the office. But there's all kinds of scholarships in various areas, but you have to look for them and go out in the community, get online and look for the scholarships. Some, some people think there'll be a perfect college list you can have. Now, that's fine to wait for a list, but we found the list even has to be gone through because all the scholarships don't match up to you and your needs. And while I'm on that subject, I think I don't want to see you applying for scholarships that you just don't meet the requirements for. A lot of people say, well, just apply anyway. I don't, but I think your time is way too valuable to be doing something like that for sure. The third thing you can do to pay for college is to plan to finish college early, especially for those of you that are in UCs and CSUs. Where if you read the papers, you know they're having budget problems. It's harder, harder to get through the school in three or four years. There are certain things I need to see you do to really help yourself out, to get out of school in sometimes three, and certainly by four years. If you're an engineering student, to actually get it done in your fifth year, that's quite an achievement. Um, here's what I'd like to see you do on that. Two major things. First of all, your advisor is just an advisor. They'll always advise you to take the lowest amount of credits but I need you to take more than the lowest amount of credits. I need you to take 16 to 18 credits uh, uh, per semester. And if you're a quarter, it should be 12 to 14 credits in a quarter school. Um, if you do the math, that will ensure that you graduate. If you just take four classes a semester, you're gonna be in school 
more than four years, certainly five years, and maybe even more than five years. So start planning to take more classes. Take more classes, which means you're going to have to get more organized. But when you were in high school, think about it. When you got good grades, you were taking six classes. You were never bored. You didn't have a lot of downtime. So I think you ought to take more classes. And then finally, use the community colleges wisely. You should be applying for your community college and registering for your community college classes here in L.A. Even if you're out of town, you can go online and take classes in the summer. Now, when you're taking those community college classes, one thing you want to be very careful about is that you're taking the right classes for your major at your college. And there's a great website for that called at www.assist.org. You'll find it very user-friendly, super easy to use. You can quickly check classes out in that community college because sometimes the advisors in community college know generally what you're supposed to do, but sometimes they're not sure about the peculiarities of a certain school and a certain major within the CSU and UC system. I really advise you to use assist.org. They're going to be augmenting that site, I hear, with even some private school information later on. So you want to uh, be looking into using that site for sure to help you pick the right classes so you're not taking a class you don't need to take. Think about this. If you can take two classes every summer, general ed, you'll have, you've gotten uh, 16, 18 credits just in the summer, and that's the equivalent of one full semester. And a lot of my students, in fact, I looked at one time, one out of four or five at one time, were finishing school slightly early even and going for that second degree even within the four years. Uh, and you do it because in the summers you're taking a couple of classes. Don't see summer as a time just to go home and get totally unhooked anyway. You don't want to lose your routine for study. You don't want to do that anyway. And you want to get used to working while you're going to school anyhow. So I strongly recommend that. So those three ways, I think, are key ways you can actually help pay for college and therefore take some of the pressure off your parents and, and you can feel you've accomplished something really great for yourself because you've taken care of the things you can take care of and then your parents have taken care of what they can take care of.